In my previous video, I described how I'd let my battery completely discharge. And not only could it, couldn't I start the engine, I couldn't even open the doors. And so I bought a Foxer charger, and after 20 hours of charging, the battery was charged full. The car seemed fine, it started, and I've used it a few times since then, no, no problems at all. But I've read on several occasions, if you let a battery fully discharge, it, it can damage the battery. And unfortunately, it's not the first time it's happened with this battery. It's happened quite a few times. So I was a bit, a bit concerned about the state of health of the battery. So I bought this, which is the Foxer battery analyzer. And I've just done a test. And unfortunately, it confirms my worst suspicions. So I'll just take you through, through the test again. So all I've done so far is connected the, the negative lead to the, the vehicle chassis and a positive lead to the, the battery positive post. And the tester tells me that the battery has 12.34 volts. Press enter. It asks me for the, the battery type. And there's three options. There's regular liquid, AGM, and some kind of gel. And I think it's just reg regular liquid. So press enter again. Now it asks me for the rating standard. And there are several options, and it varies on geography. I wasn't quite sure about my one, but... On the battery, it's got SAE, so I assume it is SAE. Press enter again, and it asked me for the rating capacity. And for this, I had to go to the, the website of the battery manufacturer, and it tells me that it's 620 S SAE. You, you can adjust this up and down. 620. Press enter again, and it's doing the testing. It tells me that the battery is charged, which is good, but the next part isn't so good. It tells me it's bad and to replace it. And it's got an, an SAE of 191. So what I'm going to do now is attempt to repair it using the Fox uh, charger. I mentioned the, the repair function when I did the review, but I, I didn't actually use it because this battery's not that old and I thought it would be okay. But now I know that there's a problem, I'm going to attempt to repair it and that will be the next stage. It's now repair time, so we're back with the Foxer Pulse Repair Charger. And what I didn't mention last time, because I didn't notice it, is that there must be different versions of this charger. And this is the updated version 7.0. I've connected the, the charger to the battery. And when I did a regular charge, I just left the, the battery leads connected, which the, which the book tells me is fine. With this Pulse Repair mode, pulses electricity through the battery and I wasn't completely happy about leaving the leads connected so I've disconnected them. And the book doesn't tell me a lot about this mode. It tells me that for motorbikes it should take about five hours and for cars it will take around eight hours. It says the maximum repair time is 24 hours and once it's repaired it will switch back into regular charging mode. And the way you put it into repair mode is just to press this button. With, with, each, with each press of the button, it will toggle between repair mode and regular mode. And it says that once it's been repaired, just to leave it charging for another hour. So at the moment, it's just in, it's just in regular charging mode. So the display is alternating between voltage, uh, amps, and temperature so what i'm going to do is press the button to put it into pulse repair mode okay the the, the fan has gone quieter and you can see pul for pulse here repair and a little icon with a, a spanner so that's all set now so it's just a, a matter of waiting i'm expecting eight eight hours or more and once it's finished doing its repair, I'll resume the video. One thing this charger isn't is fast. The book told me that, that to repair a car battery, it should take about eight hours. So I started at six o'clock yesterday morning, hoping it will be done by the afternoon. By the time I went to bed, it still wasn't done. I left it on overnight and it's had about 26 hours and it was still pulsing 
And my understanding was that when it, when it had finished repairing the battery, it goes to normal charging mode. That never actually happened. Anyway, I thought that 26 hours was enough. So just, just, to, just to sort of give you an overview of what it's supposed to have done, inside the battery there are lead plates and sulfuric acid, and there's a chemical reaction that creates electricity. And in old batteries, and batteries like this that haven't been maintained very well, you get lead sulfate crystals on the lead plates. And by pulsing the electricity using this charger, that's supposed to dissolve the, the, the lead phosphate crystals and make the battery more efficient. This battery has a CCA, cold cranking amperage rating of 620. And when I tested it before the repair, I was seeing 191. So it's actually working at less than a third of its, of its efficiency. And the tester told me that the battery was bad and it needed to be replaced. So now I've repaired it using the Foxer Pulse Repair Charger. Let's test it again and see what results we get. So I've just attached it to the battery terminals. It's showing a voltage of 13.16 volts. Regular liquid, SAE, this is 620, this is what the battery rating at. And it's doing the test now. And it tells me 605. So the repair has brought it almost back to what it should be, which is really fantastic. I honestly wasn't sure what to expect. There are some videos on YouTube about restoring batteries. And some people state categorically that you, you can't desulfate batteries using one of these small microprocessor controlled smart chargers. But what I've proved in this test is that you can. This, this, this test has been very successful. So I'm really impressed with it. I was impressed already with its regular charging ability. But now I've seen what it can do with repairing batteries, I'm even more impressed. And considering that it was such a low price, I think it's a great little device. And also worth a mention is this battery analyzer. When the battery ran flat previously and I charged it, I thought everything was fine. I had no idea that there was a problem with a low CCA. And it wasn't until I analyzed it with the analyzer that I saw that there was a problem. So I'm, I'm impressed with both devices. I, and I think they're both well worth having just for the, the peace of mind they give you. And I, I'm happy to highly recommend both.